Hello friends of Powerhouse Bakery and all my favorite divas and dudes out there. My name is Suzanne Parker and I'm the owner of Powerhouse Bakery. Um, we've got a really fun class for you today and I've entitled it Let's Do Lunch. Uh, what I want to show you is a really fun way to start with a base recipe, just a few ingredients and really show you how to reinvent. That's something that is oftentimes a challenge and if you can find a good base recipe, it's really fun to realize that with a few other ingredients that you should keep in your fridge, it's really easy to mix and match. And then I'll show you how to package them up so that it becomes a great, easy way to pack lunch, whether you're eating in or you're taking it on the go. So let's get started. The first thing I want to do is start off with our best foods list. And so when we do lunch, we always want to think of what are going to be our best foods, meaning we want to always have them available. We want to make sure that they are handy and uh, things that we typically shop for. Um, then it's easy to do a mix and match and it's also fun to maybe even occasionally bring in a new and interesting ingredient. So our best foods list are going to start off with um, the protein foods and then we're going to have our carbohydrate foods and then we're also going to have our fats, which sometimes aren't even items that we have to add in specifically um, because they might be part of our protein. And in this case, it's going to be the case because in our protein, we're going to use a chicken thigh. We're also going to have the option of making our dish um, a vegan variation. So something else that I love to have on my best foods list under the protein category are lentils. Now you can certainly buy um, dried lentils and have them cooked up and ready to go in your fridge, which is what we do here at Powerhouse Bakery, or you could even buy a canned lentils. Um, Amy's is a good brand, and so if you're not in the habit of making lentils from scratch, um, of course you can buy a canned product. This is our lentils that we always have in stock. Um, I make a lentil salad with that. Um, I also do um, all kinds of lentil um, veggie dishes, so it could be a lentil stew or it could be a veggie uh, chili. But lentils are a great way to add in that protein. So that's going to go on my best foods list under protein category. Now for this particular um, spread today, our carbohydrates are going to be a lot from the produce area. So potato, can't even spell my word. There we go. So potato, carrots, absolutely are great complex carbohydrate. We want to make sure that you know carrots are a great source of complex carbohydrate. Don't let people scare you into thinking that potatoes and carrots are a bad addition to a healthy diet because I disagree. I think they're a great way to get healthy carbohydrates. The other thing that we're going to put on this list are going to be our greens. So whether you choose kale or spinach, um, we always want to have some leafy greens in our fridge. We also want to have some herbs. And so in this particular spread, cilantro is going to be uh, one of the favorites. But remember, you can also use um, parsley and um, arugula. You could use basil. You could use thyme. All of those are great to always have in your fridge. So whether you buy them fresh in a little bag or you grow them and you pick them when you're ready to assemble your, your dishes, make sure you've got herbs always available on your carbohydrates category. And then, of course, um, if you have onions and if you have garlic, those are great items too to always have ready to go. Now in this particular dish, like I mentioned, we're gonna be starting with the chicken thigh. So our added fats are gonna be pretty minimal. Um, you can have uh, some olive oil if you need it for cooking, but in this case, we're not even gonna use much olive oil. If you have a pre-made salad dressing, that is the case where um, you'll wanna have it already made and ready to go when we're making our salads. And then of course, nuts and seeds, I always have some of those hanging around because we know that those are important added fats. We want to keep uh, added oils to a minimum in our cooking so that in fact we're using the foods that are already rich in those healthy fats as our component. So now let me show you this beautiful spread of all of our ingredients and then I'll get started making our famous chicken joe. So as our base ingredients, um, I put the chicken together. I do encourage you to buy a, an all natural or even an air chilled um, central market brand of, of 
organic chicken thighs. And here you can see it in my dish that I've already prepared. I showed you the lentils, which are going to be our two protein components. And then as we go to the carbohydrate components, um, my favorites are to use the small red potatoes. Um, I've washed these and notice that there's different sizes. This is a larger one, which they call an A size, and this is a B size. Get whichever ones are easiest for you. Um, you can even get a smaller one and they're um, not even going to need to be cut. These in particular will, will just be quartering for our dish and it works really well to have just whatever size is easiest for you. Also on our carbohydrates category, I've got my beautiful uh, greens. This is some kale and notice that I do have this um, brand of kale. It's the Organics um, HEB brand, which is really a nice one. It's already washed, but I do encourage you to pick out the stems. Notice that in my uh, little bowl here, there are some stems left. And so I would pick out as many of these as you can. It just makes your salad easier to enjoy and there's less um, hard chunks. That's oftentimes what people don't like about kale is that it's really um, got a lot of mouthfeel to it. So if you can, pick out those extra uh, stems. And then the other items I have are peppers. Now again, you can buy peppers or you can roast your own. These are poblano peppers that I have just roasted. I cut in half, pulled out the seeds, added a little bit of salt and pepper, and I just roasted them. Or you can use a pepper that is um, in a jar version. So this is my whole grain chilies, and it's a Hill Country Fair brand, and it's very similar if you don't have the time to roast your own. So again, knowing which things you can substitute in are really nice if you don't have the time, but I promise you, if you cut by your own poblanos, cut them in half and grill them or roast them, they're so easy and so fun to be able to use in a dish. So keep those handy. The other item that's kind of a pantry item is this pepperoncini. So notice that this is um, Mazetta and it's a really good quality. This has a very famous sauce in it that I love to cook with. You can get ones that are sliced or whole. This is a great little whole pepper and it's cooked with the dish and it makes such a wonderful flavor. The sauce is what's key. So when you buy that, just make sure that you hold on to that juice. Uh, and when you add them together, it makes this fabulous chicken joe sauce. The other items that I have on my table are going to be an enchilada sauce. This is a hatch green chili. Um, I like this brand because it's gluten free. Um, there's other brands out there, but that happens to be my favorite. Um, other greens I mentioned are the herbs. And if you don't like kale, you can always use baby spinach. Again, these are on our base uh, best foods list for our carbohydrates. Of course, those leafy greens are fantastic. And I've got my 100% um, um, organic gluten-free corn tortillas, fabulous for our carbohydrates. And of course, look at these whopper-sized carrots. Um, we get these at one of the local um, farmer's markets, but you can use any size of carrot. I am gonna show you how I want you to cut these so that it becomes a really beautiful part of the dish, not just your typical rings. I want you to make them really fancy and pretty, and it doesn't take any extra work. So with the ingredients that you have here, um, we are gonna make some really cool dishes. Check out this beautiful chicken joe. As promised, I'm gonna give you this recipe, but take a look at all the beautiful ingredients that we have in this. This is the chicken thigh, and it's beautiful, um, slow roasted. I did leave the skin on, and I added some of my Joe spice, which is one that I coined because of this famous dish, um, but it's a blend of fennel, coriander, and fresh ground pepper. So it makes a really nice peppery sauce. And look at all this beautiful broth. So this is something that we're gonna serve um, on the chicken is this beautiful broth and it comes with these beautiful carrots that are cooked with the, um, the broth and so all those good flavors are really captured in the carbohydrates and here's our beautiful roasted potatoes you can see them on top here they've got lots of that wonderful spice on the top and when you dig down in there you can find them when they're soaked in that wonderful sauce so really a valuable dish and what we're going to do is be able to pull out this chicken serve it as a main dish and then we're also going to reinvent to make some other dishes. Here we go. One of the reinvent is this item. And I just rolled the chicken. So I pulled it off the bone. I put it into a dish and I rolled it into my tortilla with a little bit of those, um, either the poblanos or the canned of chilies. I just rolled them, added a little bit of cheese on top and a little bit of salsa and you've got a chicken enchilada. So good. And look at these fantastic containers. This is just a Pyrex. 
a three cup container. It's got a great little snap lid on it. It goes in the freezer, the refrigerator, and even the oven. So when we assemble these, I'll show you how nice it is just to assemble in this dish, put it in the oven uh, with some foil on top, let it cook, and then it's ready to put in the fridge and have it as a lunch ready to go. So nice, right? So that is our chicken enchilada. I'm going to show you this with the chicken, but know that you can also use your lentils, your carrots and potatoes from this chicken joe dish and make a vegan, fantastic enchilada. That is a great one. And then I also used the chicken that I slow roasted in my chicken joe dish and I made a fantastic salad. So notice when I flip it over, um, all the good juices are down on the bottom and that's key because that means that the greens are not going to get soaked. Granted, kale is nice when you let it get um, kind of soft, but if you're using spinach or butter lettuce or even romaine, you put all the juicy stuff on the bottom and it's ready to go. So when it's lunchtime, you give it a little shake and you open it up and your fantastic salad is ready to go. And so as I did that little flip flop, all that wonderful dressing that really is just my Joe sauce gets into the greens and it makes it this fabulous dish. And of course it's served cold. And this is a dish where I could leave off the chicken. Again, I could add my lentils. The same good ingredients from this casserole dish will be used. And I add in potatoes, I could add in my carrots, and it becomes a fantastic vegan dish. To add a little bit of protein, I could add my walnuts right on the top and it becomes a vegan dish. So just know that this chicken joe or a typical casserole dish does a fantastic mix and match of great flavors and those that don't want the meat we can add in lentils and nuts and we get our great source of complex carbohydrates and protein all in one. Okay so let me show you how we do the chicken joe. So I'm going to add some chicken to the base but first I'm going to add in my sauce and I want you to see how that works. This pepperoncini juice is going to go right in. So again, this juice is what makes it so special. And I'm going to add in all of the pepperoncini, so the whole jar is going to be in your recipe. And so I'm going to just get all those off to the side because I'm going to lay my chicken right in there. The next thing I'm going to do is cut some potatoes. So remember I mentioned that the size isn't so critical because what we want it to do is have small enough pieces to make sure that everything gets soft and full of all those wonderful flavors in the cooking process. So those are going to go into my wonderful sauce and my carrots. So remember I also mentioned I want you to be able to cut your carrots so that they are pretty. So often institutional cut veggies are just rings. Not at all interesting and uh, I always have to convince my team to, to roll with it because um, I never want our gourmet food to look institutional at all. Some of you might know that I started my first uh, my first job in my career was in a hospital and I did not want to have hospital food uh, something that I was making so um, I quickly tried to change how hospital food looked and just the cuts of the veggies makes a big difference. So what I do is I start on a diagonal and I turn a quarter. I turn a quarter. I turn a quarter. So like I said you roll with it and you get all these beautiful uneven but pretty nice sized carrots and so when you put them into your dish you get this wonderful mix of sizes and it just it looks more gourmet so that's going to go into my casserole as well I'm going to get just a few more and again if you don't get these big beautiful carrots that's okay um, but you can oftentimes at a farmer's market find these nice big fat carrots and they're just so beautiful I'm going to add couple more potatoes. So your size of casserole dish will make a big difference in how much of your veggies you want to add in. Sometimes when we're doing this for a, a big crowd, um, I will do one, um, one casserole with just the veggies and one with the chicken so that A, we can keep them truly vegan and B, we can get lots of good roasting flavor with that pepperoncini juice. So again, it kind of depends on how much you want to um, cook for. And this is my favorite Joe Spice, so I'm going to sprinkle that on my veggies. So again, this is a blend of fennel and um, fresh ground pepper and coriander. Coriander is not one that's used very much, and so I love using it in this dish because it's something that sort of is an unusual flavor, but it's really savory. It's a wonderful complement. And now I'm going to add in my chicken. 
So again, I'm using the air chilled chicken skin on, and I'm just going to nestle it right in there. And because I've got a good amount of veggies in this pan, I'm going to just snuggle them right in, probably going to do four chicken breasts. Um, and again, you can get extra pepperoncinis and even a second jar, and it comes out so good to have extra. So that's just about right. I'm going to put a little bit more of my wonderful Joe Spice right on top of those chicken thighs. And if you prefer to pull the skin off, you absolutely can. Remember, this dish, I'm trying to help you see ways to not add extra fats. And so this is a fantastic way to do that because you're getting just the naturally occurring fat from the chicken. You're getting good essential fats, especially when it's a really good quality all organic product. You can feel good about the um, essential fats. It will be a blend of saturated because it's from an animal. There'll be some polyunsaturates as well as mono because that's kind of a blend that's naturally occurring in our chicken product. Now you can also use um, a, a ready-made uh, vegetable broth. The Central Market Organics is really nice or you can make your own which you know is kind of my way to go because we always have plenty of extra veggies hanging around. So we have extra celery and carrot pieces and extra stems of the herbs, so parsley and cilantro, and that makes a great broth. So don't throw them away if you can avoid it. And so we're going to put the balance of the liquid in as broth, and we want it to just start to cover the edges of that chicken. And we want to make sure that all those veggies are nestled into the liquid so it gets lots of great flavor all around the carrots and the potatoes because whether you're eating it vegan or you're eating it with the chicken those veggies are so good when they're engulfed in lots of juices so that is ready to pop in so again super simple a jar of pepperoncinis uh, your chicken and then some carrots and potatoes and that's really it you could add onion you could add garlic if you wanted but really when you have this blend you've got plenty of great flavor this is going to go in the oven so when it all comes out, now I'm going to pull the chicken apart and I'm going to use it for our other ingredients. So look how soft this chicken is. It just comes right off the bone. And I'm going to use this for my enchilada as well as using it for my chicken salads. And I can do the chicken salad with kale or I can do it with spinach. So lots of good variety. Once you pull it off, you can save the little bit that's left on that bone and make some more chicken stock if you didn't want to have the vegetable stock. It's kind of nice to have both really. So again, I'm going to pull off the skin and I'm going to get that chicken gently pulled off and leave some of the, if there's any that are it's kind of hooked around the edge, it tends to be a little bit grisslier. I don't, I'm going to leave that because again, it'll make great broth and not as great for um, enchiladas. You don't really want to have to bite into that. And then I am going to take off any visible fat, pull that off to the side, and now I'm ready to do a rough cut. Now you can also just pull it if you didn't want to have any cut marks. So check this out. If you wanted, you can just have that natural striation of the muscle come apart and it makes a pulled chicken look. And that's something that I do often with a chicken salad, just because again, it doesn't look institutional. If you have cut marks, it looks like it's kind of come from a, a manufacturer rather than home style cooking. So I'm just gonna pull it all apart and that looks so beautiful. All right, so there we are. And I'm gonna add in some of my great sauces. So first, let's start with making our enchilada. So I'm gonna add this to my bowl. And this is where those peppers can really come in handy. If you choose to have them already um, in the can, you can also get them chopped. So notice in this one, they are whole, which again, I kind of like because it makes it feel like it's real homemade. And um, we can do a rough chop and add them right into our chicken pieces. You can buy a larger can or a smaller can, lots of choice. But see, this one is not quite as pretty. So let me show you the difference. That is the one that's uh, the Hill Country Fair brand, and again, it's pretty good. But check out how gorgeous these are. See, there's so much color and texture. And again, it's a mild pepper, and so I just drop that in. And these last really well in your fridge. So I cook these about oh, once a week, and they last easily seven to 10 days. So look how pretty that's gonna be. And when I blend these together, you get such great flavor. 
So now I'm going to add in an enchilada sauce. And again, it doesn't have to be much, just enough to add a little bit of moisture. You could add a um, salsa if you prefer, or if you've got some of this little enchilada sauce, we're going to drizzle that over. And now we are ready to roll our tortillas. Yeah, that looks so good. You know, I'm just thinking as I'm looking at this, this would also be great for a breakfast dish. I mean, I know we're doing lunch, but you could add this to a frittata and have a fantastic breakfast protein. So here we go. I'm going to use this uh, little Pyrex container and I'm going to build our enchilada. Right here in the container, I'm going to add my tortilla and I'm going to fill it with a little bit of this chicken and fold it over and tuck it right in. That's what I love about these sizes. They're perfect. And you can make three and it fits just perfectly in the width of this container. So when I used to make these for my boys, they would each have a, a container to themselves and I would fill them up and all they would do is grab it and go. See, they fit in just perfectly. And then what I'm gonna do on each side is add some of the carrots and the potatoes from that chicken joe. So they're getting their complex carbohydrates from the tortillas, those two veggies, and they're getting plenty of protein from this beautiful soft cooked chicken. There we go, one more. Now you can use the dairy-free cheese or you can do a classic. So I've got this Tillamook mozzarella, which is so great for enchiladas, but of course you can use a dairy-free one too. So I wanna make sure that everything is pretty well covered with cheese because I don't wanna get any dry edges especially since I'm not adding any oil to these tortillas um, that would probably be traditionally done uh, in a, a Mexican restaurant when you make uh, enchiladas. They're usually fried or at least um, soaked in a bit of oil. So that's a really good place just to save some calories and some saturated fats. Now I'm going to add a little bit of my salsa right on the top again to keep everything nice and moist. Beautiful. And this is going to go right into the oven, um, right when they're ready to eat it, as we want. If we, if we want to put it in just like this, I'm going to add the potatoes and the carrots off to the side. And it makes extra veggies, a peppercini, can't forget that. You can always add this extra sauce to keep it a little bit more moist. Because that again, that peppercini juice adds a ton of great flavor. So there we go. There is our chicken enchilada. Beautiful. And just in case you have somebody that wants to eat vegan, we're still going to use the same idea, all those wonderful flavors, but I'm going to use the lentils like I mentioned. So we're going to add a nice big scoop of the enchilada, I mean the um, lentils to the tortilla, and I'm going to add some of the enchilada sauce. Again, this is a vegan sauce, so it's not going to have any meat product and I'm going to add my dairy free cheese. So again, I like this so delicious brand. Um, you could use a yellow cheese if you wanted. I just happen to love the look of the white cheese. Now in this one, I'm going to add it on the inside to give it extra moisture, but I'm also going to sprinkle a little bit on the top. Again, the eyes eat first and we've got to make sure they look absolutely beautiful. So there goes my lentils. Do a quick little fold and tuck and put the cheese on top of this one. Now the next one, I'm gonna add in the carrots and the potatoes. So using our chicken joe and all the wonderful sauce, get a couple of carrots and peppercini, and of course all our beautiful potatoes. So this is gonna be super soft when they bite into it. And heck, I could put some enchiladas in there too. I'm going to keep saying that, I'm sorry, lentils in there too. Fold it and tuck it in. So pretty. Last little bit of cheese. And here comes the sauce. Now, if somebody was really worried about having um, chicken broth in their vegan dish, I wouldn't do this. I would just keep going with the enchilada um, green sauce. But I just want you to see how versatile Chicken Joe is because we've got all this beautiful sauce that uh, tastes really good and it has lots of flavor without any added salt and no added fat. 
So again, that's going to go right into the oven, and then we'll put that red little lid right on there, and it's ready to go into the lunch bag. So let me show you one more before we're ready to go, because I know I have one more container, and I want to show you chicken with spinach. So one more enchilada, and you will see how you can get your greens in so many ways. So I'm going to add in my baby spinach. There we are. And again, we're going to use that same beautiful mix of chicken that I pulled from the chicken joe. So a couple little leaves of spinach, and I'm pretty generous with the leaves. As you know, I love to get lots of greens in there. And I'm going to layer the chicken right on top. And you could use kale in this place. If you prefer, baby spinach is nice though because it's really soft. So it's going to be a nice mouth feel when you bite into that. It won't be um, dry and kind of overpowering. So you can, you can add the cheese in the tortilla or you could put it right on top like I did on that lentil version. Here's the rest of my chicken. So the trick is to make an extra batch of your chicken joe. That way you have all these options to play with and you don't run out of your chicken just in the one dish. Never feel like you have to cook each night. Think about ways that you can do a lot of mix and match. Here I'm going to do a really fun mix and match. I only had a tiny bit of chicken left. I'm going to throw in some lentils to go with my last enchilada because truly this is a mix and match variety that we've got going on. It just makes it so fun. Last little bit of cheese, sprinkle it in, fold it up, and we have our last dish ready to go. We'll add a little bit of this beautiful sauce right across the top. Make it so moist and flavorful. And top it off with cheese and it's ready to go. So I'd love to see what you do with your chicken joe. You can always buy our joe spice here at Powerhouse Bakery or you can make your own. Make your favorite blend. Make sure there's enough kick in there and always have your salt that you add separately and you'll have so many fun dishes to play with. So I hope you enjoyed today's class and I'll see you next time. Thank you.